Hey everyone, this is Axel from Thinking Right Center. We are back with part three of the position top 10 series. This time we are doing second base. It seems like everybody's top 10 is starting to roll out there as we get further along into the off season. So I'm excited to see how mine stacks up against the others. I don't really have too much to say other than FRV stands for fielding run value. All the other numbers on the screen should be pretty self-explanatory. And with that, you didn't come here to listen to me ramble. We'll just get into the video. Getting us started is 2021 first round pick out of UCLA, Matt McLean of the Cincinnati Reds. McLean is a natural shortstop and played more games at short than he did at second base this past season. But with the alien life form of Ellie De La Cruz slotting in at short, McLean is making the move to second base. McLean showed why he was a first rounder in his rookie season last year before an oblique injury forced him to miss the last two months of the season. McLean played in 89 games and posted a 3.2 F4 and a WRC plus of 128. It's very easy to get excited about McLean as he has the tools to be a great player, even having a sprint speed in the 90th percentile. However, there was a good amount of batted ball luck this past season as he way outperformed his expected stats, and the strikeout rate was a bit concerning at 28.5% of the time. He's not going to hit 290, but I do expect his walk numbers to increase, which will help hedge some of the swing and miss concerns. I'm still very bullish on McLean. He's going to be an above average defensive second baseman with good gap to gap power. And playing half your games in Great American Small Park means there's a real chance he sneaks out 25 homers and steals 25 backs on top of it. I love his game, but some risk in the profile means he's capped at number 10 for me. Glaber Torres of the New York Yankees is the ninth best second baseman in the league. It is hard to believe, but Glaber is still just 27 years old. He's not the Messiah that Yankee fans once thought he would be, but Glaber is still a really good ball player. Glaber made some insane improvements to his approach in 2023. As he slashed his strikeout rate by 8%, all the way down to 14.6% of the time, which places him in the 91st percentile of hitters. He also improved his walk rate by 3%, as he walked 10% of the time, going from well below league average to well above it in just one season. These changes helped him put up a 3.2 F4 and a 123 WRC+, which were both high marks since his monster 2019 season, despite running into some unfortunate batted ball luck this year. He took some steps back on the defensive improvements he's made over the past couple seasons, and he keeps getting weirdly slow for some reason, which does cap his upside, but he's one of the best bats you're going to find at the position, with some potential to get even a little bit better, and that's why he's here at number 9. Stanford man Nico Horner of the Chicago Cubs is number 8. Nico is about as consistent as they come up to this point in his young career, with his WRC Plus numbers from the past three seasons reading like this, 106, 106, 102. That is the hitter Nico is, just barely above league average. But if you've watched Nico Horner play, you know why he's number eight on my list. And you also know why he was able to produce a 4.7 F4 this season. Him and Dansby Swanson make the Cubs easily have the smoothest middle infield out there, as Horner ranked fourth among second basemen with a fielding run value of 11. He also was the second best base runner in the entire league behind Corbin Carroll, according to Fangraph's base running run statistic, as he really took advantage of the new rules to steal 43 bases while only being caught seven times. Nico's upside is limited. He doesn't hit the ball hard enough to start putting up better offensive numbers, as it'll always be a struggle to hit double-digit homers. And he doesn't walk enough to hedge the power concerns, but he's going to do just enough to get by with the bat and then make spectacular plays in the field and on the base pass, which is why he's the eighth-best second baseman. Padres second baseman Hassan Kim slots in here at number seven. Kim's third season since coming over from Korea can definitely be classified as his breakout season. Kim has always been a glove-first player, but he seemed to figure something out with the bat this past season. He posted a career-high 112 WRC+, plus, which was caused by some massive improvements in his chase rate, whiff rate, and walk rate. He has been steadily making improvements every year since his MLB debut. However, I do think that he's reaching his ceiling here of what he could be as a player. He hits the ball softer than most players in the league, and it is hard to project a season where he hits more than 20 home runs, although he does lift the ball well. But he doesn't need to hit 20 homers in order to be a good player. He put up a 4.4 F4 last year because he's an elite defender and runs the bases very well. He also took advantage of the new rules and stole 38 bags. He had some good batted ball luck this past season, and I just don't see the bat becoming much better than what it is right now, which is why I'm slightly lower on him than others. But he's still a good player and cut from the same cloth as Nico Horner, just with slightly more upside, which is why I have him at number seven. Your grandfather's favorite player, Luis Arias of the Miami Marlins, is number six. I'm not really sure I have to talk much about Luis Arias. He's going to win the batting title seemingly every year and past that. It's not much but this guy hit fucking 354. He's so incredibly fun to watch that I wish I could put him higher than six, but I simply can't. He's a bad defender at second base. He's pretty damn slow. He doesn't walk. He doesn't have power. But man, there's nobody better on the planet at these two things. 
not striking out, and getting hits. In fact, he was so good at getting hits that it led to a 132 WRC+. He's the only player in baseball that can hit the ball as softly as he does and post that number. The guy is a unicorn with the bat, but that doesn't mean he's the best player in baseball. I honestly wish I had more to say about Luis Arise, but I just can't. He's going to hit at least 330 again, and that's just going to be that. He's really fun, and if he did literally anything else in a baseball field, he'd be higher, but he's still really good, so number six it is. Another shockingly young player at age 27 is Ozzy Albies of the Atlanta Braves. Ozzy is coming off his best season of his career with the bat. He put up a 4 f war while putting up career high in home runs with 33, RBIs with 109, and WRC Plus with a 124. It's easy for him to get lost in the Braves lineup, which is why I think there's not a lot of people talking about the year that Ozzy had. People forget that Ozzy's 2022 was riddled by injuries and poor performance, so to see a return to the 4 win player he is was very refreshing. Ozzy has a gift for putting the bat in the ball, as he's in the 14th percentile of chase rate, but is in the 74th percentile of whiff rate, and only strikes out 16% of the time. His 5'8 frame doesn't allow for him to hit mammoth shots, but he's one of the best players at putting the ball in the air, which maximizes every last bit of power he can produce. Albies is always going to be a threat to hit 30 home runs, and is going to have an OPS right around the 800 mark. The defensive numbers really hated him this past season, but I know he's better than that, as the metrics have loved him in the past. To put it simply, He's an average defensive second baseman who's almost assuredly going to hit 30 home runs with 100 RBIs. And because of that, he's number five. The new owner of the longest postseason hit streak is coming in at number four with Cattell Marte of the Arizona Diamondbacks. Marte finally put together the season we've all been waiting to see since 2019. He stayed healthy and played 150 games, which is typically the most important thing for him in his career, because when he's healthy, he's one of the best players in the sport. He put up a 127 WRC plus and was hitting the ball very hard with a 90th percentile exit velo of 106.8, which is much higher than the league average of 103.6. But even coming off a great season, I think there's more upside with Marte. If he can cut down on the ground ball rate and start hitting the ball in the air more, you could see easy 30-plus homers with the potential for even more. He's really worked on his overall approach in the past couple of years, which led to an 11% walk rate and a 17% K rate this season, which are both well above league average. I know he's 30, so dreaming on adjustments can be a bit of a lost cause. But even if he makes no adjustments at all, I don't think anybody is doubting that he can do exactly what he did this past season, which makes me very comfortable putting him at number four. Future Hall of Famer Jose Altuve of the Houston Astros is number three. That's right, the top three in this position are loaded if Altuve is going to be number three. We only saw 90 games from Altuve this past season, but it was just about as good of a 90 games as we've seen from the now 33-year-old. He put up a 154 WRC plus and hit 311 with an above 500 slug. He walked, didn't strike out, you know, typical Jose Altuve type of shit. You guys have watched him enough by now. You know how good he is. I think what's more useful for me to talk about is why he's three and not two or even one on this list. The batted ball luck was very prevalent. He's one of those guys that seems to always outperform the expected stats, but the last 90 games were particularly drastic. His ground ball rate spiked to 49%, and he had an astounding BABIP of 348. The defensive metrics didn't like him, and he took a step down comparative to the seasons before. Obviously, I still love Altuve, and I think he's a stud, but again, he's 33, and there are a couple red flags that just make him slightly riskier than the other two in front of him. But again, I can't stress to you enough how good I still think Altuve is, which is why I have him at three. 2023 World Series champion Marcus Simeon of the Rangers is number two. It feels like Simeon finally got the respect he deserves this past season. Since 2021, Marcus Simeon has missed one game. One singular goddamn game. Every other game, he's there, just being a beast. The thing to love about Simeon is just how well-rounded he is. Even in games where he's maybe 0 for 4, he made a great play at second base, or maybe he reached on an error and made a heads-up play in the base pass. There's always something, which is why he was able to produce a 6.3 F4. You do the little things right every day, and it adds up. None of his numbers are going to blow your socks off, but all of them are very good. He hits for a decently high average, he gets on base, he hits doubles, he hits homers, he plays great defense, it's just the whole thing. And it's not like this is a flash in the pan either. People forget that if you take out the shortened 2020 season, Simeon has been averaging a 5.8 F4 since 2019. With this kind of consistency in production, he easily would have been number one if it weren't for a newcomer to the position. Surprise, Mookie is the Dodgers' second baseman now. And with that, he's the best second baseman in baseball. He's coming off a season where he played emergency shortstop and, like, wasn't horrible at it. Made a couple really cool plays, actually. 
He graded out as a slightly below average defender all around last year, but does literally anybody have concerns over him at second base coming off a full season to prepare for it? I know I don't. And with that, he's coming off his best season since his ridiculous 2018, where he won the MVP. If it weren't for an historic season by Acuna, he would have won another MVP this past season. He hit 39 homers, drove in 107, scored an insane 126 runs, he hit over 300, slugged close to 600, and walked at a career-high rate of 13.9. And oh yeah, he never really strikes out either. And the crazy thing is, all the expected stats back up the performance here. No luck to be found. As a Red Sox fan, I sometimes look longingly at Dodgers game watching my Marcus Lynn Betts run around like a future Hall of Famer. We didn't know how good it was until it was gone. So Dodgers fans rejoice, as somehow he isn't even the best player on your team. Fuck. Yeah, well, anyways, he's the best second baseman in baseball, and it isn't particularly close. And there it is. That is the top 10 second baseman in baseball for the year 2024. If you made it all the way through, make sure to dislike the video, like it, leave a hate comment, leave a positive comment, share it with a friend, show it to your mom, show it to your dog. I don't know. Just do something with the video or don't. I just appreciate you guys for watching and stay tuned for the third base video. Thanks, guys.